The last bit that we're going to look at is going to be working with proportions. And it's a setup of an equation that we haven't seen yet um, on its own. And proportion involves ratio, so we're comparing some things. A ratio of two quantities is their quotient. So setting it up as a fraction. We've seen a few examples in a different context, percentages. So for example, 73% is the ratio of what? 73 parts out of, or to, 100. Since the percentage means per 100. Another way that we could set it up is as a quotient again, as a fraction. Quotient is just a fancy word for fraction. The ratio of two different kinds of measure is called a proportion. So we're going to look at a few of those. So suppose an animal travels 2,720 feet in 2.5 hours. Its rate or its speed, how can we represent it? How far is it traveling? This many feet. And over what time interval? So with regard to time, 2.5 hours. But it feels kind of unnatural to report a rate or a speed per every two and a half hours. We usually kind of want to unitize it and have it per hour. It makes more sense. So if we do that division, it actually comes out to be 1,088 feet per hour. Then if I told you, hey, I'm traveling for two hours, or this animal is running for two hours, how far is it getting? We can calculate it faster than if it was in this form, but they're equivalent. So when we have an equality of ratios like this, it's called a proportion. So we can travel this much in two and a half hours, and based on that proportion, based on that rate, if I only go for one hour, it travels for this far. So they're proportionate to the amount of time that it's taken for the thing to run. So I want you to take these next two examples and solve them. Recently, a baseball player got seven hits in 25 times at bat. What was the batting average, or the rate, in the number of hits per times at bat? And then in the second one, impulses in your nerve fibers travel 320 kilometers in 2.5 hours. What is the rate or speed in kilometers per hour? Pretty fast. So for the first one, how did you end up setting that up? So we have our ratio of hits per times at bat. And again, it's not very practical to report batting average per every 25 times you're up there. So if we actually do the division, we're looking at 0.28 hits per times time at bat. makes more sense to report it in that way, but again, they're equivalent. And we could write this as 28 over 100 percentage. And the second one, impulses in the nerve fibers travel 320 kilometers per 2.5 hours. So if we were reporting that per hour instead, we're talking about 128 kilometers per hour. So again, proportionate still have the same rate, still traveling at the same speeds, but just based on our unit time that's involved. So let's look at a few application problems with proportions. The first one, a 2013 Fiat 500 Turbo can travel 306 miles in highway driving on nine gallons of gas. Find the amount of gas required for 425 miles of highway driving. So how do we set that up? I'm traveling 306 miles, and that is related to what amount of gasoline? 306 miles for nine gallons. And we want to make the units match up. So if I have miles up top, I need miles up top in my other proportion. If I have gallons on the bottom, I need gallons on the bottom in my second proportion. So what are we trying to figure out? How much gas is needed for 425 miles? So our unknown in this case is the number of gallons. I'm just going to call it X. 
So I can travel 306 miles on 9 gallons. How many gallons does it take me to travel 425 miles? So since we have a proportion, one fraction, one fraction, no adding on or subtracting on bits, it's one entire piece. We can go ahead and cross multiply. So I've got 306x is equal to 9 times 425. And we just have to solve for that x value. So we've got 306x is equal to 3825. When we multiply these together, we need to divide by 306. And x is equal to 12.5. Another way that we could have done this, instead of cross-multiplying, would be multiplying by our LCD to clear all of the denominators. So if we multiplied by 9x everywhere, we would get out the same value, that same equation. So on x, what are my units here? I solved for the number of gallons that it would take for me to travel 425 miles on the highway. So I need this many gallons to travel 425 miles. And it's important with these kind of proportion problems to actually specify the distance that we're traveling or our other, our other unit, because based on how far we're going, we need a certain amount of gas. So it's different if I'm not going as far. I don't need as many gallons. If I'm going farther, I need more. So we need to be able to specify which ones are attached to which. So go ahead and try the next one. A company that prepares and sells gift boxes and baskets of fruit must order quantities of fruit larger than what they need to allow for selecting fruit that meets their quality standards. You don't want rotten bananas. So the packing room supervisor keeps record and notes that approximately 87 pairs, okay, we're dealing with pairs, from a shipment of 1,000 do not meet the company standards. Over the holidays, a shipment of 3,200 pairs is ordered. How many pairs can the company expect will not meet the quality requirement? So how did you set that one up? We had 87 bad pairs and a batch of 1,000 or an order of 1,000. And I'm trying to figure out how many bad pairs am I going to get in an order shipment of 3,200 in total? Okay, so we have that proportion. We could either cross multiply or multiply by the LCD between these two. I'm just going to go ahead and cross multiply. So I've got 1,000 times x. 1,000 x is equal to 87 times 3,200. So I've got 1,000 x is equal to 278, 400. When we divide it by 1,000, so we got rid of a few factors of 10. X came out to be 278.4. So what does that mean? Approximately, approximately 278 pairs, okay, since we can't have you know, four tenths of a pair in a shipment. I guess it could be kind of rotten, but not all the way. But anyway, around 278 pairs um, will not meet the standards standard in a shipment of 3,200 pairs. So the place that we see proportions a lot are actually in geometry, specifically when we're dealing with similar triangles. Similar triangles. So if two triangles are similar, then their corresponding angles have the same measure, and their corresponding sides are proportional. Proportional. So what does that mean? We have the same shape, but the size or the scale of the figure might be larger or smaller. So what about these relationships? These two triangles, it's a dr better drawing on the packet, but they're similar. We have the same shape, but they're just different sizes. But they're proportional, and the angles still have the same measure. So what's going on with these? If I'm looking at the side lengths, 
They're represented by the lowercase letters. And what relationship do we have? A in my smaller triangle is related to R in my larger one. It's proportional to this side. And what else? Everything is proportionate, so the proportion is all equal. Side length C is proportional to what of my larger triangle? Little t. And again, everything is proportionate, so they're all equal. The last bit, side length B is in proportion to side length S. And the other part that we discussed, the angle measures are the same. So we say angle, we represent it with that little symbol. Angle, so we don't have to write out the word angle every single time. So if I'm looking at angle cap A, so this angle right here, it is going to be the same as what in regards to my larger triangle? Angle R. They have to be exactly the same measure, so I get the same shape. And what else? Angle B is going to be the same as cap S. Angle B is the same as angle S. And very last, angle C is the same as cap T. Okay, so we have that relationship. So let's answer a question. How high is a flagpole that casts a 45-foot shadow at the same time that a five and a half foot woman casts a 10 foot shadow. So at the same time is important. The sun isn't moving around, so we still have the same angle with all of our triangles. So let's draw a little picture. Here's my nice flagpole. And don't make fun of me. Uh, that's good enough. Flagpole. And it casts a shadow that is 45 feet. So we have our little relationship and we can draw in the other side of the triangle if we really want to. And then here's my little woman, five foot five, so her height, we have this relationship. And she casts a 10 foot shadow. So again, we have that triangular relationship. So I have length, 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 and I'm trying to figure out how high is that flagpole. So I'm going to call it X. I need to figure out that distance. So what is my proportion? X from my larger triangle is related to what value from the smaller one? The height of the woman, 5.5 feet. And I took from my larger triangle in the numerator. So I need to take from the larger triangle its other side, and it's related to which piece of my smaller triangle? The shadow. So shadow compared to shadow, height compared to height. So since we have that set up, let's go ahead and cross multiply. See what we get out. So I've got 10x is 45 times 5 and a half. So 10x is actually equal to 247 and a half. So if we do a division by 10, we just have to move the decimal place once. So the flagpole is 24.75 feet. And again, we can sum that up in a sentence as well. So that flagpole, flagpole is 24.75 feet tall. Fits the proportions in relation to our smaller triangle.